with a day Peace and blessings manifest with every lesson learned And if your knowledge was your wealth Then it would be well learned Yeah, Karen Women made in his image Then call me by my name Most intellects do not believe in my God But they fear us just the same Go on and on and on, no, 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 no. I go up, I better go, better go, 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 Get your own Cause I go on no no The world moves on no no Come on sis come come on But don't forget your own On and on and on and on Yeah Rick On and on and on and on I go on and on Welcome to Power of Connection. I'm the director of Pro Bono Works for Chicago Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights. We're a nonpartisan organization working to secure racial equity and economic opportunity for all since 1969. Tonight, you're gonna hear from inspirational people who've worked hard to keep our community strong. They are nonprofit leaders, small business owners, and volunteer attorneys who provide legal support and technical assistance to our clients on the South and the West Sides. In March of last year, Chicago Lawyers Committee launched a virtual legal clinic to help nonprofits and small businesses overcome legal issues they face during the pandemic. The law firm of Patton, Much, and Rosamond went above and beyond to help our clients, and so we are honoring them tonight. We are also honoring Advocates for Urban Agriculture, a group of urban farmers leading a fierce movement for water access, and who first came to us in 2009 as they were formalizing their legal structure. We're gonna end the night with a special performance with Shawnee Dez, Lef Jones, and special guest, Rick Hall. Throughout the evening, you're gonna see a link to donate on your screen. You can also jump in the chat box and say hello. Don't be shy. Thank you for joining us tonight. Hi, I'm Lindsay Mueller, and I'm the Managing Director of Program Innovations at the Women's Business Development Center. Over the past year, the WBDC partnered with the Chicago Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights in the Englewood community, where they brought our women-owned small businesses education and provided one-on-one -on -one legal consultation. I'd like to give a very special thank you and shout out to volunteer attorneys from Combined Insurance, particularly Larry Goldman, Christian Beck, Mary Salito Gusi, and Lori Prince. After one class recently, a woman small business owner told me, I've had a few questions that need to be answered for years now and wasn't sure who to talk to for help. Within the 20 minutes, I got all of my questions answered. I have since told so many people about the Chicago Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights, and I can't wait to work with them again on future projects. 
Thank you all for everything you did for the WBDC and our small business owners. And thank you, Chicago Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights, for connecting us to one another. We could not have delivered such impactful programs without your continued dedication and support. When I'm able to help someone overcome a legal issue, I feel a sense of personal fulfillment and overwhelming happiness for them. I recommend other attorneys volunteer so they can really understand uh, the impact that they can have on others in the community at large. What we found was that um, the pandemic actually had companies, our clients and other companies to pause uh, because they weren't really sure what to do, how to do it. And that created for us a pause in our business. And so we're in the middle of our year, we're in the middle of doing business. We have team members that have families and lives and we have to look at how do we continue to support those, our, our team members. The crisis moment for us um, was when we realized that a, a great deal of our expenditures were going towards our lease. So we identified that we have got to be able to navigate this lease and get out of it. And at that point, um, talking to the corporate entity, um, they were looking at moving forward with uh, a lawsuit to secure those funds. Um, so that was a very, very heavy and dark time for me as a business owner. I didn't know where to turn. I didn't know who to talk to. And one of my colleagues recommended that I reach out to the Chicago Lawyers Committee. I was given the information for the lead attorney, um, Eddie, who um, would be in contact with me and get the ball rolling. I have always tried to have an active pro bono practice just because it's an opportunity to give back. Uh, I'm not a defense attorney, I'm not a prosecutor. The things I do on a daily basis, although I'm sure they do impact people's lives somewhere down the line, I don't see it necessarily. Typically, I draft an agreement, I negotiate, I finalize it, the party sign, I hand it off to my client, and they do all the things behind the scenes to carry out the terms. Uh, but this was one of those situations where even after the termination agreement was finalized, Alexis and I were still in contact and it was clear that there was more than needed to be done. I couldn't just leave it with her to carry out the term. Uh, the main thing we ran into was her movers. They didn't have the insurance requirements. And, uh, you know, I talked to Alexis. I said, OK, I'll handle this. I'll take care of it. So I talked to the landlord. Um, you know, they wouldn't budge. At one point, I was calling moving companies into Chicago to price out. Uh, you know, would it work within Alexis's budget? Would they have the right insurance? When you're working with partners such as Eddie, um, it's important to really have someone who has an understanding of, um, of, of, of justice. You know, not just the law itself, but justice. And so, um, for, for, for me, it gave me an opportunity to feel free to speak openly, to, to speak my heart, to speak my convictions, to speak my thoughts. So Alexis, it was, it was your willingness to be open and honest and uh, somewhat vulnerable with me that allowed me to really listen and understand that there was more going on than just the immediate agreement in front of us. Uh, and without that, without that open communication, I don't think I would have understood the gravity of what you were going through, which allowed me to step in and take a larger role on this. And I think that was because, you know, again, um, we came together on a, on a mutual understanding and foundation, and we were able to move forward in the name of justice, but also what's most appropriate to the law. It is my honor to present the next award to Catton Muchen Roseman for outstanding pro bono support. During the Illinois shutdown, we heard from many nonprofits and small businesses who are facing legal issues due to the economic impacts of the pandemic. These issues especially impacted communities of color. In late March 2020, Chicago Lawyers Committee launched a virtual legal clinic to provide free legal support through 30 minute consultations with impacted small businesses and organizations. Pro bono attorneys at Ketton truly made our legal clinic a success. Their skills and expertise with emergency relief funds, tax-exempt organization law, contracts, and real estate saved small businesses from bankruptcy and preserved numerous jobs in small nonprofits. The firm went above and beyond resolving urgent legal issues for our clients, even taking on extra clients during a time of high stress. Thank you, Ketton, and congratulations.
Our pro bono program is serving people in need year in and year out, but when the pandemic hit, it really um, uh, energized our folks. We had attorneys from the most junior associates to the most senior partners clamoring to say, what can we do to help? And one of the great things about our long-standing relationship with the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights is they gave us a great opportunity for our lawyers, especially those who aren't litigators, most of whom do transactional corporate type work, to really be engaged and help those in our community. So the small business and nonprofit project that the Chicago Lawyers Committee set up with remote service to them um, was like a magnet for our lawyers. Speed was critical in this, in this project because um, people needed to very quickly access what aid was available. They needed to know what their legal rights and obligations were versus vis-a-vis -vis other people in connection with the pandemic. So it was, it was, it was crisis work. We were able to put a, a team together uh, to address the pandemic need, related needs of uh, small businesses and nonprofits through the Chicago Lawyers Committee project, uh, in part because we already know what it is that our attorneys want to do. Uh, we, 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 we canvass our attorneys every year to find out what their pro bono interests are. So we had our corporate squad, and we had our nonprofit squad, and we had our real estate squad, and eventually we also had our intellectual property squad. And they were each headed by a partner, or two in some cases. And so when I got a call uh, or an email from Erica at the, the Lawyers Committee saying, you know, this, this organization needs help, I could quickly go to that squad leader, and that squad leader would reach out to the folks who were in their area of practice, and typically within hours we were able to take on the matter. I, and where does my commitment come from? I think it comes from a, a deep Jewish commitment to justice and this whole, so the whole notion that the Hebrew of the, the tikkun olam, of the repair of the world, that was very much a part of my upbringing. And I think that that's, on one level, that's it. And I think the other level is even more personal, which is I've always identified with the underdog. I, I, I always want to try to even up the odds for people who are less powerful. And I think that's a, a strong motivator for me. Defining success in this area, I think about that Dr. King said that the, the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends toward justice. But it doesn't bend itself. You have to put in a, a bend it, it, to, to make it move toward justice. And so I figure that every, every bend you make in that arc toward justice is a success. Hello, Salam. My name is Akli Luadei. I am the executive director of the Interpen Community Association of Chicago, uh, which is located at North uh, Park at 5800 North Lincoln Avenue. Uh, we provide uh, numerous services for refugees and immigrants uh, and uh, you know we work with resettlement, uh, supporting with employment, ESL training and so on. Recently we have been developing one of a kind Ethiopian museum in the Midwest and uh, in that process uh, we were uh, kind of a little bit taken aback because we needed the permit from the city of, uh, zoning permit from the city of Chicago. Uh, Ackerman and LP in particular, Kate Duncan, Kathleen Duncan, and Harrison Cooper helped us with that application and made that a reality. In addition, they also helped us with applying for property exemption uh, application with the state of Illinois that is underway. These were major achievements for us. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. As soon as you think about volunteering, you become a solution. Sometimes there's no other person around to do it. The best part about volunteering is feeling like you made a difference at the end of the day. I'm excited to present our Community Partner Award tonight to Advocates for Urban Agriculture, a group that has been leading the fight to expand urban agriculture in Chicago's disinvested communities. Urban gardens are a critical solution to environmental injustices. They use vacant land to grow fresh produce, 
provide job training and education opportunities and create beautiful communal spaces. When the pandemic hit, Chicago's communities located in food deserts faced even greater food insecurity. And when urban growers were needed more than ever, they faced deep administrative and financial barriers to get critical water access. That's when AUA stepped up with their education and support to urban growers who needed help. Chicago Lawyers Committee partnered with AUA to provide free office hours where any urban grower could get legal and technical assistance. Thanks to AUA, the city has expanded water access to Chicago's communities of color who need it most. Since AUA contacted us for legal assistance almost 10 years ago, they've grown by leaps and bounds. Their story demonstrates that the power of connection among pro bono attorneys, nonprofits, and small businesses creates a lasting connection all across the city. Congratulations, AUA. We're excited to share your amazing work and your story. Water is life. Water for this garden means I get to utilize water to grow these vegetables to feed this community. This is a food desert, but not for long because I have seven other gardens that also have water that we're able to give free vegetables to the people in this community. Yeah, so out of this garden, we do a weekly produce distribution for that is free to North Lawndale residents. So in 2020, we had 250 square feet of growing space. And this year we are uh, maximizing the space to have 1,100 square feet. And because of that, our water access needs have changed drastically from last year to this year. During the pandemic, a lot of people have shown interest in growing their own food. And that's directly tied to you know, unfortunately, some of the um, policies and, you know, broader issues that are happening, like the pandemic, like uh, the social uprisings that have been happening, like the high rates of, of unemployment. But it's well known that most food is traveling about 1,300 miles to get to where it's going to be served. And cities, large cities like Chicago, will go without food completely if that food supply stops coming in within just three days. So our urban farmers are necessary, not just for beauty, like the beautification of our cities, but also necessary to literally feed our communities. The main source of water that these sites um, access from are the fire hydrants. An urban garden like the one that we're in today, they need the right hydrant equipment. They need the caps, the keys, the backflow prevention devices, like an RPZ valve. Um, they need the money to pay for the hydrant permit. They need the resources to be able to navigate the application process. They need to know how to inquire insurance, um, other legal forms, right? It's a really burdensome process. We tapped into AUA uh, for all resources for water access, uh, legal help, and just kind of like a mentorship through it because again, it was our first project this year. What we noticed was last year when we started to do this was that residents were coming through the garden and they were really excited about seeing things growing, especially things growing in their neighborhood. Um, a lot of little children come into the garden, so a lot of them are able to taste something for the first time here and know that it was grown in their neighborhood. It's kale, it's rainbow chard, it's beets, things that when I was growing up in the middle of the hood, I had no idea what it is, but we're allowing children, we're now allowing our neighbors, even elders, to have first contact with our food system in a new light. We would not be where we're at today if it was not for the support of the Chicago Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights. When I'm out here serving, I meet people in the community and they say, what can I do to help? So serving begets serving. It, it causes people to want to be a part of what you're doing. And it's a beautiful thing because then doors in the community are open for other people to come and serve. I have a lot to thank the Chicago Lawyers Committee for civil rights, for connecting me with these brilliant lawyers who have regarded my business and put in their passion to serve and ensure that my business has an age in all legal areas that need so much attention. Also, I am sure to remember them, especially as we 
all strive weather this pandemic storm. Thank you, Mark, Angel, Achille, and Candace, to all that you did. And thank you, Chicago Lawyers Committee, for civil rights, for, re for connecting us to one another. I highly recommend the Chicago Lawyers Committee for civil rights and other issues. They will take your case as their own. The best part about volunteering is being able to work with local small business owners. Hi, my name is Marilyn Rogers and I'm the Chief Development Officer at the Chicago Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights. Chicago Lawyers Committee is proud of the work that we're able to do with nonprofits and small businesses in black and brown communities. During the pandemic, we organized our pro bono attorneys who contributed hundreds of hours in transactional legal assistance to make sure these entities were able to stay open. They are the reason why we're asking for your support tonight. Please consider making a generous donation to help fuel this program by going to our website. Your gift will support our Pro Bono Works program, which is critical to increasing economic opportunity and closing the racial wealth gap. It takes all of us, creative, self-determined entrepreneurs, Pro Bono Works volunteers, and people like you, people who care to invest in these businesses, preserve jobs, and increase wealth in Chicago communities of color. Thank you for being the change and supporting the power of connection. The best part about volunteering is getting to know your clients and working with them to find creative solutions to their problems. It's a really great feeling to know that you are making a difference. I 
stay out all night, night yeah. I said I'm meant to take it slow Press the gas to the floor Where I'm headed, I don't know Wanna go back Da, 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 da Da, 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 da Dum, 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 dum Yeah, Kenny I wanna go back Da, 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 da a pleasure such a blessing and I'm gonna be back so if I show up up here with a mic and a speaker y'all better just act like it's normal okay <laughs> thank you so much for having me